Hi, I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I wanna welcome you all to my channel. Today we're doing a furniture flip. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel and you are interested in DIYs, uh, just fun adventures of a small business owner, uh, this is your channel. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the notification. So when I do post a video every Monday, and now I've been doing bonus videos on Fridays, you will be notified of these new videos. All right, so I hope you all enjoy this video. Okay, so I'm starting my projects, and I initially had a different vision, um, but was thinking, you know, with the 4th of July coming up, um, I'm gonna do kind of like a 4th of July theme, I love color in my booths. Um, yes, I do like a lot of whites too, like my Monday video, but I'm not afraid of color. So I bought, I, I found it just recently, uh, the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in, it's called Farmhouse Red. So I found these two chairs that um, I'm going to, I picked out of the garbage, of course. <laughs> That's where I find all my goods. And I am going to paint those red. Uh, I just felt like it would go with the whole red, white, and blue theme. And with the holidays coming up, if I don't sell them in my booth now, they'll be perfect uh, for the holidays. So uh, the actual chairs will be the red. Because the blue went over so well, I just cannot tell you how fast I paint um, items that are this blue. They just go out the door. So I have a dresser that I picked out of the garbage as well. I'm gonna leave the hardware, the gold color. I really like it, um, but I am going to paint uh, the base, this blue, leave the hardware gold. Unfortunately, the top drawer, only one of the um, handles is there. So I'm gonna pull the one handle and I found a long time ago, I always save hardware. I have these crystal clear, like a crystal glass um, handle. So I'm gonna see if those work. So I'm gonna put those in the top drawer. So we're gonna start there. Um, I'm gonna bring you along while I paint um, and show you how I'm gonna do that. But the dresser is currently a gloss. I hate gloss. Oh, so I'm gonna to have to sand that a bit to make sure the paint sticks. Um, I know chalk paint supposedly sticks on anything. I just don't wanna take any chances. So, all right, let's start with the chairs. We're gonna go to the um, dresser then next. We're gonna get the first coats on. And uh, then I have a table I'm gonna build. So I found a table in the garbage. Um, the top was totally trashed, but the legs were very cool. So thank goodness I always carry my screw gun around. I unscrewed the legs. So we're gonna make a tabletop to go, or a, a tabletop to go with those legs. And that will go with the red chairs. So. I'm thinking maybe like a gray, like maybe like a, a barnwood gray or something like that for the top and then maybe white legs or something. We'll see. We will see. <laughs> the two chairs and then the two bar stools totally painted twice um, and I did use the red uh, rust-oleum chalk paint uh, so I'm absolutely loving it I love how bright um, but what I found with this chalk paint like with the blue it was a different type of blue and then once I distressed it and I added that clear coat it kind of changed it so that's what I'm hoping gonna kind of calm it down a bit so for the tops of the chairs I made my video um, which I released this morning and um, one of my subscribers said that she saw on bar stools it said one hour parking and I thought how clever so what I decided to do I went and I cut out um, out of I bought this it's like um, a stencil and it's around. I just cut it out of my Cricut and I'm going to paint um, a circle uh, on each top of white and then I'm going to use um, the typesetting stamp from IOD and here's the stamp set so you guys can see it. I'm going to use that stamp set and it's got numbers and letters so here are the letter or the numbers. So I think I'm gonna do like 
one and then have it say our parking and maybe even do like the hour in capital and then parking in lowercase so we'll see i but at first i'm going to go ahead show you guys how i'm going to stencil this top on we're gonna let it dry we're gonna then i'll show you how i distress them all and then we're gonna stamp these this one hour parking on top all right so let's go ahead and get started okay so i used the stencil i have it down i also had my clear ruler and i measured um, to make sure it was as center as possible on this chair so i'm hoping my math skills were good today all right so what i'm gonna do i start off with my stencil brush dab some in the center and I'm just going to kind of go around the edges because you don't want it too goopy around the edges that it leaks through. I can touch up afterwards but to make it real nice and smooth I just wanted to make it as nice as possible. my other brush then I'm going to fill in once I get the edge done here. So what we're doing is we're making a round circle on the bench to be able to put one hour parking. So I thought it was so cute when someone told me that, that I'm like, that's it, I'm doing it. I'm going to use that. I'm just taking my regular paintbrush and I'm just painting all of it. I am going to um, take the sander and distress it a hair because I want the red to come through just a bit before I stamp on it. Now the ink that I'm using from IOD is permanent so it will it is a permanent ink that you can use. Um, I am going to clear coat it as well. Just to seal it because people will be sitting on here. made one little tiny boo-boo, but I think it turned out pretty good. There. Perfect! Looks pretty darn accurate so far. Let's do it to the next one.
All right, so we got these done. And I'm gonna go rinse my brushes and then we're gonna go ahead and start the sanding. So I'm gonna use my sander and what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna distress them, um, just randomly distress them on areas that uh, would naturally distress with age. going to take um, the piece of clear that comes with the back that I peeled off the back of my stamps. I'm going to take that and I am going to lay it down and then I'm going to position where I want um, the letters to be and so it all fits. Uh, the parking is a little bit um, longer but I think it looks very cool how I'm going to do it. The G and the P kind of um, extend uh, the round circle, but that's okay. I'm okay with it. I think it's going to look really cool. So um, I have some news. Uh, one of my subscribers had asked me in my last video, well, one of my last videos after I did the peonies, um, they said, maybe you should sell the IOD stamps. So, you know, you show how to use them. And I'd ha I just, I actually was kind of tossing around the idea and I'm going to do it. So I applied, I got accepted. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer like all the colors. Um, I will offer like the different ink colors, the pads, and I'm gonna offer um, the select few of stamps that I'm gonna be showing in my different videos. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be offering. It will be available on my website once I get my shipment in. Uh, so the, the stamps that I really like um, and that I'm going to recommend. But, um, so I wanted to tell you guys that, so I'm pretty excited about it. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, get going here. So I've already done it. I put one hour parking. I'm going to line it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the ink pad go ahead and ink up. Bugs are coming out. I'm going to get this done. Ink up really well. This. So with the new stamps, what you want to do is you want to make sure you prep them by sanding them. I uh, just wanted to let you know that as well. So I take a light grit sandpaper and I just uh, sand them all very thoroughly. Uh, when you store your ink pads, you're going to want to always store them ink side down just so that all the ink stays to the very top of the pad as well. All right, so I inked it up. You can see it. I don't know if you can see it there. You can kind of see it. And I am going to centerize it as best as I can, set it down, and then rub over. rub over all the letters. To make sure that the ink transfers over. Okay, I think I did it. Woo, here's the deciding. Oh, I love it, I love it. This. All right, I 
think it looks great. Although there was just a little bit of a smear here. It's fine. It's fine. So one hour parking. I love it. This one, one hour parking. So I have that done. I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna clean my um, clean the, this off. And once this dries, then I'm going to clear coat it, and it's gonna be set to go. So then I'm going to um, finish the legs. I've already done um, one coat on the legs, which I'll show you guys. And then we're gonna build the table to go with this set. I'm really excited. I think I'm gonna have time to do my dresser. So I am gonna paint the legs. So I have four of these legs and I'm going to paint them white or the, I'm gonna do linen white. So let me go ahead and get those done. ready to start my tabletop. I went into my stash of wood. I found five boards. They were the same thickness. Uh, I'm going to cut two of them in half. So I'm going to use those. So let's so, go ahead and get them cut. All right. So what I've done so far was I cut uh, one, two, three, four, five, six boards um, to three and a half feet. So I got those cut. I sanded them down. Then I cut across piece to 30 inches. Uh, these are the legs that I picked out of the garbage that I took off of a old table. So I set them down and the 30 inch piece fits perfectly in there and it's going to be the cross piece. I'm going to put two screws in each one or in each board to like hold it together. So I'm going to do that now and then we're going to stand that up um, and we're going to actually um, nail the legs on and then stand them up. So this is how far I got. I put the legs on. So I put the two coats of white on those legs that I took off the table that I picked out of the garbage. And I distressed them. I clear coated them. And then I took the boards, I cut them to size. And I love how they're looking. It's just a real distressed looking top, just real vintagey. So now what I'm going to do, I use a distressing mixture that I've created for my barn quilt. So it's like a final step. It gives it a little bit of a aged look. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and put that over the entire um, uh, top and that will seal it as well. So I'm gonna do that now. So we're gonna start with the dresser. We're gonna go ahead and remove the hardware and give it a good sanding and then we're going to paint this baby blue i actually sanded the first drawer and it actually turned out kind of cool it's got like a a red underneath it so it must have been a red dresser before so but i think i i really am sticking to what i wanted to do the blue so all right here we go here is an update i have the two coats of paint on everything. So I used um, the blue from Rust-Oleum and then I distressed the drawers. Uh, the whole thing, if you remember correctly, was white. I sanded it all down because they used a glossy paint and I, like I said, I distressed it and then I added a clear coat to the drawer so far. Uh, the dresser is still drying, so you can see it kind of looks a little wet here and there. I have uh, a scrimmage for my daughter's softball game, so when I get back, then this will be complete. I'll be able to finish it up. So I was going to use the glass knobs. Unfortunately, uh, the this base part on the glass knob was extremely long. It just it wasn't gonna work. So I found these and it actually matches almost perfect. Um, actually, it looks like it goes with it if you look. 
So I'm going to put those on. The hole itself was a little bit smaller. So I just took um, my drill bit and here I'll show you. And I just drilled um, that a little bit bigger. So then it will work. So I think it's gonna look awesome. I already put this side on and I think it looks perfect. So I found this hat box and it was actually the color of the inside and it had some other stuff on it. So what I did is I um, painted it white with the chalk paint. I did have a couple spots bleed through. So I'm gonna put a little clear coat over it and then repaint those spots. On the top, it's just plain. And IOD has this stamp, um, it's like a love letter. And I am going to stamp that on the top. And I had it perfect where I almost got the full stamp on here. So I'm going to do that. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use my black ink pad from IOD. And I'm going to go ahead and completely cover terrible at multitasking, like talking and doing. So sometimes I, when I edit my videos, I'm like, okay, Sana, you can finish that sentence. All right. So we're going to flip it over. And this stamp, you don't even need to take it off of the, um, the backing. You just want to use it just as is. All right, we're going to set it down and then just rub over the entire stamp so that the ink transfers over to the top. Okay, so I love it, it's awesome. Although there's like a little mark here. I'm gonna just touch that up. But other than that, it looks great. So I'm gonna use the stamp on this and I'm gonna show you next how I'm using the stamp on fabric and we're gonna make some pillows to match as well. All right. So I am taking my IOD stamp pad and uh, just covering the entire actual stamp. Uh, putting it then firmly on the fabric and just rubbing it over just like I did with the hat box. And I'm doing that to both pieces of fabric. I'm making two pillows uh, that I have 16 inch pillows. So I'm cutting, the, I cut the fabric to 17 by 17. After I stamp uh, the stamp on the fabric to seal it or to ensure that it stays on the fabric. I then take a hot iron and I am going to iron over the entire piece on both of them. All right, I found these rounds at Hobby Lobby. Uh, if you remember from my last haul, I did find these candlesticks. Uh, what I've decided is I'm going to make these risers like I did with um, those other um, risers that I made recently. So I pulled out my black chalk paint, uh, Waverly chalk paint that I picked up at the Walmart. And giving them a good coat of paint um, each side, I always do two coats. I then will go ahead and distress them. So here you can see they're distressed. And then I'm going to glue them on with E6000 glue. Uh, this does dry pretty quick and it offers a very good hold. So I'm applying the E6000 glue to the actual candle stand themselves and then um, flipping them over to centerize it and then they're all set and there you have it.
Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video. What was your favorite piece that I flipped? I did love the bar stools. I want to thank Candy for that awesome suggestion. I I just I love the whole theme of the look of the whole display. So um, that will all these items will be going in my booth over at Antique Up. And I'm going to start another flip of more items to restock more of my booths. So um, the announcement that I did make during the video is I am going to be offering IOD stamps on my website. So I am going to be offering a limited amount of stamps, all the inks, all the pads, uh, probably some of the molds and maybe some of the transfers. I haven't played around with the transfers yet, so maybe I'll dabble in that before I make that decision. Um, but I'm loving the molds and the clays, so definitely those as well. So now when I do offer or show you how I like to use it, you'll be able to purchase it right from me. So win-win. All right. Well, this next week's video, I'm, I'm this weekend, I'm bringing you shopping with me. So this exciting, okay, I don't know how exciting it's going to be. But uh, up by our cottage in the North Woods, uh, there is uh, the city called Phelps, Wisconsin, and they are hosting their annual rummage sale. Now Phelps isn't huge, so I don't know what to expect, but they have a map, I heard. So um, we're gonna get a map, my mom and I, and we are gonna bring you rummaging and thrifting with us. So hopefully I get some good items, we'll see. Um, or otherwise I'll be scrambling for a different video on Monday. So, well, have yourselves a great weekend. See you Monday.